Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Descharm, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. And in today's Tech Corner, uh, we're really happy to have back with us, so it's been a while, is Rob Bellinger from Evident, uh, formerly Olympus. That's right. Um, and what are we going to look at today? Today we're looking at the new Olympus AR1. This is a module, an add-on feature to our stereo microscope line to provide augmented reality within the field of view uh, for the operator through the eyepieces. And this is on the so, uh, SX, SZ, SZX X. series, right? That's correct. So any of our SZX series lines, the 7, the 10, or the 16, can have this module added for AR. And it's really the top unit that you see there. Um, the whole Trinoc unit creates that projection system along with a digital image to go out to some software interface, allowing us to do quite a few things. It, it really has three main purposes. One is for you know, simplifying a operating procedure for an operator working under the microscope, provide guidance for that operating procedure. Um, it also works well for training purposes, so where if you have a user that you're trying to train on that standard operating procedure, the trainer has a lot of interface and back and forth that doesn't require the trainee to pull his uh, vision away from the eyepieces as it's working. And last, it's very uh, upgradable for existing systems that they might already be in there to add the unit to it, okay. since it's these few components. Well, well uh, so. take, us, take us through it. Show us yeah, what it does. So I wanted to start with the uh, start the training. And the software is really simple. You have task, which would be like your standard operating procedures and the tasks the operator needs to go through while they're working under the microscope. Or training, which, which is very versatile in here, allowing the software to show the screen and work back and forth. And then we also all talk about at the end how to create these operating procedures and the simplicity of how you create kind of a slideshow. Okay. Um, but if I go in to start the training, we'll see a live image of what you see under the microscope. And if you put that little chip under there, we'll see it come in and you can bring it into focus. Oh, okay. I look, look in here. Okay. Yeah. All uh, right. Focus. Yeah. Probably focus down a little ways. Oops. And. Always forget which way to go. Okay. Here we sure. Go. So we're seeing the live image that you see through the eyepieces. Okay. And if I'm doing training, I can actually use a pen on the screen here. And if you look through the eyepieces, I can create like a oh, point okay. oh, or wow. an arrow okay. or draw circles around certain so things. So it's overlaying it's overlaying this digital image right onto your visual yeah. plane and in this, the microscope. And what I'm looking at is is optical. Is optical. I'm, I'm not I'm not looking at a at a project I mean I'm not looking at a at a camera view. I'm actually looking at an optical, optical view, view but somehow part. it's overlaying the digital information on top of that. Right on the image that you're seeing through the eyepieces. Got That's it. correct. Okay. So this interface allows the trainer to put text boxes or pointers or circles. They can put uh, measurements and shapes of any kind, load in pictures or load in videos as they're doing the training um, rather than stepping through a standard operating procedure. And it works two ways. I can even push um, this button here, number two, on the keyboard and it passes the mouse to you. So now if you run the mouse, oh. Oh, okay. you're going to see you have a menu right on screen in your eyepieces. Sure. It's hard to visualize for everyone else out there, but... Oh, okay, so I can take a... So if yeah, I'm, I'm drawing screen, and you're seeing it there, right? I'm seeing the circle drawing and the line. Oh, so okay. this can work the opposite way. Just doing this training mode, the trainee could ask questions, draw something around what they have a question on, or huh. it could be there at a point where they have a question that they're stuck on, and they need to bring their manager in, and he could connect to this system remotely from his desk right. and see what's on the screen. He could do the drawings and say, well, what do I do here? Okay. What, is this, is this going to pass inspection, or is this part supposed to be bent? And they could give them the verification instantaneously. No, you need to replace that component, or yes, yeah. that'll be fine. Just make sure it's making contact or something. So it works as a, a dual purpose. Sure. So, so the operator could do quite a bit just using basically operating the computer through, through, the, through the eyepiece. Okay. Yeah, so they can, okay. they can also load on the eyepieces. You saw that menu come up. There's yeah. the ability to open, and they can open the standard per operating procedure or the task, we call it. So if I go back here and start a task, 
you have the ability to hit the same open button in the eyepieces. And I created a really short, simplified task here for a few, couple slides okay. of how we want to work with this part sure. and Let's perform a uh, check on it. So if I open this, the first thing that's going to come up is okay. move the sample into the microscope to the left side connector using your minimal zoom. So there's an arrow here pointing to where you can kind of align it so you get close. Okay. And there's buttons on the left-hand side where your zoom knob is. Got it. There's next and previous buttons. So if they hit next, oh, okay. it'll say increase the zoom to 2x. And you see in the eyepieces, you see the zoom level. Oops, at the top. Okay, there yeah. it is. Before For us okay. over here, Two. we have to go to hardware configuration. We see the zoom level here as well And then if we want to. And then focus on the inner... That Kind of that inner ring. Focus on the top of the connector ring, yep. Okay, and then hit the and, button again. Yeah, and the purpose of this is to verify this connector ring is at least a 1.7 millimeter diameter. So now you see at this zoom, this diameter is set to that value, and you can just put the part, align it underneath, uh. and verify that that circle fits within. If it's too small, you would be able to tell really quickly and yeah. say this part needs rework or something like that. It's just a QC check and the operator would continue on to the next pin and the next pin. So you could have forward. all sorts of instructions. Basically, this is guided, is kind of a guided inspection, or is one use for a guided inspection. Guided is inspection. Just keep going through, step, do this, do that, next step, yeah. and, and... So imagine in the past, if they didn't have this overlaying their eyepieces and they were doing the work under it, they yeah. would have had to look go up to the monitor, see right, the software, right, right. go and do a measurement on it, look at their Word document or their PowerPoint on what the next step is going to be, then go back to the eyepieces and continue doing it right. and try to remember what the next step was, where this has instructions right on the screen for all the steps they need to do. So it improves throughput. It improves repeatability between operators as well, that they're going to be soldering the blue wire where the connection is supposed to be going, right? And, and I, just, I just also uh, I just had a thought. So, and maybe you'll get to this later when you're talking about setup, mm -hmm. but I'm at a particular magnification. It told me, it told me to go to 2x That's magnification. Right. And then it gave me this circle that is 1.7 millimeters in diameter. Yep. Was, if, if so if zoom, I change the zoom, does that circle? <laughs> the circle will adjust in size with the zoom factor oh, because the oh, zoom cool. is connected now to our software okay. with that connector. So now it's still the same size. Okay. We just went to 2x in our instructions because the user could clearly see the yeah. item there. We didn't need to go higher or lower too much. So it so it is it, it it's, it's it's dynamic. It's dynamic. Mm -hmm. It knows where the microscope is. So as the user makes changes, it's it's changing it's dimensions changing the size whatever of the it dimensions, needs. Okay. Yeah. Any okay. kind of the gauge what we call it, a gauge measurement. Yeah. The gauge measurements can be widths, they can be diameters, they're dynamic with the zoom. So as the operator changes the zoom, we don't have to worry about it being incorrect calibration or measurement values because it'll dynamically change with them. So even though we told them to go to 2x zoom in the instructions, if they went to 3 because they wanted to see it closer, right, right. they would automatically size properly and still provide them the correct measurement. Okay. Um, we can also put on the screen just reticles as well, so cross reticles that have specific dimensional measurements in here. So you could just line up something in the reticle yeah. quickly too, if that was an easier way for them to operate with it. So that's all part of the setup of that scope of work. You put up the information you want. One of the other things that we tend to show is video guidance through here. Okay. So it's great being able to put pictures and text docs and the little measurements, but what if you have a complex thing that they need to do, or perform uh, uh, you know, a procedure underneath the microscope, you can actually have a video running in the background. Okay. So I'll show that with that other connector that we have there. And what I'll do is open up the spring test video. Get this in. Yeah, so this is just a spring connector. And one thing you might want to verify on here is that the springs are going properly down into the position and they're not getting caught on the side. So you actually have to deflect the springs. And, and it's hard side. to see them if you're holding it in your hand. But in here, we can easily see, now that you've focused on it, the spring and where it goes down into the connector. So press the button and that'll move So set the, the zoom step, at right? one and focus at the top. And zoom then if you push the button, okay. the next step here will be okay. the video below shows an example of the spring alignment test. So you're seeing this video okay. through your eyepieces, right? Right, right. Okay. So the operator could take their... So now I'll take my tweezers, tweezers or whatever they're using. Yeah. What they're doing. And mimic what's being done. 
in here and verifying that they're working just the way they're supposed to in the video. <laughs> wow. This could be a video of how to solder the component in the right locations. It could be a video on how to assemble a, con a micro connector to another connector and how to lock it in place or something. So they okay. might be connecting two things together under the microscope. It could be a video showing where a certain circuit is supposed to be connected to a larger circuit, and they're okay. doing that at, at micro levels too. So, um, so. Uh, it, it almost sounds like what you're saying is that the one of the main applications for this is, let's say, assembly uh, assembly operations, kind of, or, or inspection operations. Absolutely. So, manufacturing, so medical device manufacturing has gotten to such a small component level, they're doing a majority of it under the microscope. So where they can increase the the visual resolution to the operator because they're soldering tiny wires now, it's amazing, and um, or doing small connections on very small circuits sur surfaces. So medical device or semiconductor where you're looking at very small components and they're trying to assemble or verify the assembly of some component on a surface. Right. Um, maybe that requires measurements as well to verify placement of say resistor packs on a surface of circuit board. They have to be placed in very specific distances to align to the circuit, the pattern or something. So they can do the quality inspection under here as well. Okay. Maybe it's not just assembly, it could be quality inspection and verifying everything done with a standard operating procedure. They have videos showing them what it's supposed to be and they're verifying to compare to that or pictures of what's supposed to be. Okay. And that all is done through the IP, so it's very quick. They don't have to look away and interact with a whole other computer monitor. And the whole training aspect so, that you talked about, about, about earlier, I think is, is really It's is really, really useful. It can take yeah. training times down from weeks to days because it makes it so much more efficient and easier for someone to see and follow the instructions so you could train an operator much quicker okay. using a tool like this. And, and how, how easy is it to actually set up the, the pursuit, like what we looked at today, how easy it is to set that up? Great question. So say you already have an SZX 7, 10, or 16. Okay. Uh, the only component you would remove is the tri knock, which is the head that holds the eyepieces. Yeah. This bit, okay. Or you might have a bi knock that didn't even have a camera. You would replace it with the AR unit. It can even fit, as you see on here, we have our ergonomic components if you have those, or you can add them to bring the height of the microscope higher because yes. you're much it, taller than I am. I'd have to get on my tippy toes to see through there, but I could crank this down and adjust it to my height. I, I do want to touch on this so, a little bit. We, we've covered yeah. the SEX um, microscope before, but the, for those who haven't seen it, the ergonomics on this are really impressive. Uh, and uh, uh, Tell me if I forget some of these no, so yeah. you can move the whole height. That's an eye point height adjuster. So if you so this whole that, thing moves moves uh, up and down. It does, and right. it won't change your field of view. Or I was going to say, yeah. nothing changes. Through, I mean, it, as I move this up and down, my field of view doesn't change, the That's focus correct. doesn't change, nothing changes, okay. Yep. And, then and then you then have the tilting heads tilting. and long tubes for yeah. ergonomics so you're not hunched over, leaning yeah. over. You can see like on a table, you've got a great table here that's height adjusting as well. That's yeah. very ergonomic. So some operators want to stand and work sometimes. Then they might lower the table, readjust this, and sit and work at it. Yeah. It's great for ergonomics because sitting in a chair for eight hours a day can be long. <laughs> right, so you're right, standing right. at a unit, cranking the eye point up, and being able to stand and work at it for periods of time is really good. Um, so that can be added to the system. It doesn't have to be for the AR to work with this SZX zoom body stereoscope. Um, a proper camera system, so our DP23 or DP28 camera systems uh, attached to, so where you can go out to the monitor. And if you already have your own PC, great. If not, you'd have to add a PC in the monitor system to create the procedures and to do the interaction back yeah. and forth. Uh, talk talk that's about it. creating the creating the procedures. Yeah, great, great step. So back at the home screen, I'll open one of the procedures I've done in the past, like that pen measurement one. It really is as simple as a PowerPoint. It creates slides on the side. The slides don't have the pictures of the live image in them, it just has the overlays that you want to have. And this white dotted line corresponds to the field of view you see okay. through the eyepieces, because the eyepiece is around. Right. The camera is rectangular and sees a little larger field of view, which is normal. But you want to make sure whatever you're creating in each slide is in position under the eyepieces. So as I'm creating it, you'll even see the change. If I move this to the top, you would see it in the eyepieces move to the top, right? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is they could insert pictures on any of the steps as they're going through. If they have to insert a picture of this is the blue wire, this is what it's supposed to look like and where it's supposed to go, they could have a picture right in the view here. 
How many boxes can you can you put on a slide? I think as many as you can fit in the field. Oh, really? Of view okay, here. so you yeah. just keep adding, <laughs> kind of again, like kind if of. If I like wanted to put another PowerPoint. text box okay. down here, I could draw it in, and I can type in anything I want down here, and that text box would appear through the eyepieces now as well. Yep. And I would save this slide. I can add new slides, delete slides, move the slides around, get the exact procedure. So each one of these slides, when you were pushing the buttons on the Zoom it, for next and previous, it's just stepping through these slides. Okay. Um, the operator creating the slides would maybe create measurements in here as well at certain points. They'd bring up the reticles or bring up the measurement gauge for circles or widths. They can have the reticles showing. They can bring in video like I did earlier on that one where we bring in a video and you can reposition the video wherever you want. The video okay. can be overlaid over the whole screen even or the whole eyepiece almost and text boxes and pictures. So it becomes a working document that you save and then at the beginning they load it either directly from the eyepieces like you were saying you could bring up the menu or we could load it here okay. and start the process. And then you just step through it using the, using using the buttons, buttons on the, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, buttons or you can use the, or, or the, or, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the mouse. mouse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that, that's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> very PowerPoint-esque. Yeah. You just yeah. uh, change the font size, change the colors, change anything you want in here and then save this and then when you go back home you open it you select the one you want to open, like the spring test again, and you have all of it set up in the field, field of view. And this is, I think you said this earlier, this is, this is only for the SZX series, right? SZX series, yeah. Okay. They're the series that allow you to mount and separate the tri knock off the head. It's a specific series okay. for us. Um, uh, and you can add it to existing models. Are, are most people using this with or without uh, a stage, uh, stage movement? Great question. So it depends on the part. Some people will have fixtures okay. that they lock their part into. Some people will have something called a glide stage that okay. the part sits on the surface and the stage just allows them to gently push yeah, it around push it. Yeah, and, okay. and it creates an easy movement. More than my, my, yeah. my, my shaky position here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or you can put, put a physical XY control drive stage under these as well okay. or go even fully motorized stage and have who's, a joystick. Who's showing the most interest in, so. in this right now? Right now it's medical device. They, okay. They've had a need for a long time to standardize procedures between operators and to get rid of the guesswork out of things so they don't have to worry about uh, soldering a wire in the incorrect position or connecting a connector on the wrong spot. So right now all they're doing is having on the screen their scope of work. They look over and there's pictures in the PowerPoint and they're like, okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. But they're back and forth constantly and it slows yeah. them down and it has a lot more prone, it's a lot more prone for error. Now that it can be right on the eyepieces, visualizing as they're doing the work, it's going to make it faster, easier for them, more ergonomic so they're not constantly moving around, looking back and forth, and the accuracy level should improve because it's guiding them right on the screen. Right. And it's, that's where it's falling in, but we're seeing it in any kind of manufacturing, and it's new for us, so we're growing the interest. And it is available on the market right now. It is available right now. We. Um, you know, we'll have demo units going around the country so they can reach out to their local sales rep and ask to see a unit. And we can even send in um, evaluation systems and set up evaluation systems or have the customer even set up their own evaluation system if they want to. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, Rob Bellinger, yeah. evident. Yeah, yeah, thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks, <laughs> thanks and, for uh, the time. Uh, yeah, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining us again here uh, today as well. Uh, if you have any other equipment you'd like us to uh, bring on the show, just let us know, or some topic you'd like us to cover, just send it to qdl at qualitydigest.com, and uh, I'll do my best to bring them on the show. That's it for today. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you at the next QDL. So long.